new research findings consistent with theory of impact event 12,900 years ago. This is on phys.org. Matt Sims Shipman of North Carolina State University, research findings. New research findings published by Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, PNAS, are consistent with the controversial theory that the extraterrestrial body, such as a comet, impacted the Earth approximately 12,900 years ago, possibly contributing to the significant climate ecological changes that date to that period of time. The paper includes significant findings about the nature of so-called microspherules that were found at a number of prehistoric sites based on materials research work done at North Carolina State. But while the findings are interesting in themselves, the paper is only the latest in a heated scholarly debate focused on whether such an impact event did take place. The debate takes back dates back to a 2007 paper in which researchers reported finding evidence at multiple sites of a significant impact event. The evidence cited that the paper included a large increase in the abundance of magnetic microspherules at the study sites. These microspherules are metallic spheres in the range of 10 to 50 micrometers. For comparison, human hair is 50 to 100 micrometers in diameter. So these were uh, a fifth smaller, uh, one fifth of the size. Now, specifically, the 2007 team found hundreds of thousands of these microspherules in each kilogram of dirt they, supply, they sampled at the Younger Dryas boundary, the YDB layer, from several sites. The YDB marks the period when the Earth's climate reverted to conditions similar to the Ice Age, and populations of prehistoric animals such as mammoths appear to have dropped off precipitously. It also marks the period when the Clovis culture in North America seems to have experienced a significant population decline or some significant cultural modification. Samples were also taken from layers above and below the Young Dryas era boundary. The microspherules were found in much greater numbers in the dirt samples taken from the YDB as compared to the samples from other layers. These microspherules have a variety of natural and artificial sources, including impact events, volcanoes, and industrial pollution. Most types of microspherules are easily distinguished from one another. However, in 2009, another team of researchers published a paper calling the 2007 findings into question. The researchers examined two sites cited in the 2007 paper, the Blackwater Draw site in New Mexico and the Topper site in South Carolina, as well as five others, and reported that its researchers were unable to find increased numbers of the relevant microspherules in the YDB at all but one site, and even that site was questionable. Now the new PNAS paper finds that the 2009 study relied on flawed protocols. Perhaps more importantly, the researchers behind the new study have re-examined the Blackwater Draw and Pot Topper sites, as well as a third site in Maryland common to the 2009 site and were able to find microspherules in amount consistent with the 2007 hypothesis at each site. But it's important not to get carried away, they said. Quote, our study replicates only a small subset of the research report in 2007 and within those narrow limits, our research results are consistent with theirs. Much research remains to be done to prove or disprove the hypothesis, says Dr. Malcolm Lecomte of Elizabeth City State University, who is the lead author of the paper. The role of minerals research. Lecomte brought some of these microspherules to the analytical instrumental facility at North Carolina State, which provides both analytical instrumentation and expert staff to help researchers analyze and characterize materials and mineral structures at the micro and nano scale. Quote, they wanted to know what's in these spherules and where they came from, says Charles Mooney, the scanning electron microscope lab manager. Quote, we analyzed the microspherules with the SEM, which allowed us to obtain high resolution images of the microspherules. We also collected X-ray generated by electron beam sample interactors to tell us what elements were in each sample. Moon explains this told us the microspherules were largely made up of iron, aluminum, silicon, and occasionally titanium, 
with one spherule containing significant amounts of rare earths such as carium. Dr. Dale Batchelor, director of operations at AIF, also sliced open some of the microspherules using an analytic instrument composed of both a focus ion beam and an SEM to examine their interior structure and composition. Interestingly, some of the microspherules were partially hollow, but exhibited internal crystal structures when cross-sectioned with the FIB. Quote, to our knowledge, this is the first time of the FIB technique being used to cross-section YDB microspherules in, in effect uh, exploratory surgery in the microsc microscale. The FIB is the scalpel and the SEM is the eye. Most of the microspherules were made up of elements in proportion similar to the composition of the Earth's crust and not, as some had proposed, meteorite material. And in addition, the surface characteristics of the microspherule indicate that they were heated to a molten temperature and then cooled rapidly. Quote, this is consistent with the theory of an impact event, but falls short of proof positive, end quote. This is what Lecomte says. The paper, Independent Evaluation of Conflicting Microspherial Results from Different Investigations of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis was published in the PNAS paper. And this was, uh, uh, this is on phys.org. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.